What up? It's Molly. And today I want to make this little video right here of me troubleshooting the electric bobber. Uh, for the people who don't know, I did a couple of videos in this electric bobber. I built, I did a build video, I did a review, and um, I've been having two problems, and these are really the only two problems I've been having, and that's one, programming the controller, and two, my battery. And I want to talk about the good and the bad with both of these problems. So first I want to talk about the controller. I've been having this weird issue where it's like, at first it was working fine, programming and I was changing settings, changing current amps and all that good stuff, messing around trying to learn the controller, and then I'm going to just show y'all what's happening. Alright, got my keys. I'll hit the switch, you'll hear the high pitch whine noise the motor makes. It's on. So as you see, we're spinning. Got power. Seems all good, right? I'm on gear one. Why is it stopping? And there's the problem right there. So I was trying to make sure maybe something's overheating. I checked the motor, checked wires. The motor was cold, wires were cold, nothing was hot, controller was cold. So I'm like, okay, there's no overheating issues. When I plug it up to the computer to check the little program, no error codes were popping up at all. So I'm like, what the hell is the problem? If there's no error codes, if there's no heat issues, what could be causing this to happen? So that's when I pulled everything upstairs because I got sick and tired of bringing my laptop up and downstairs and up and downstairs into the garage uh, just to get no progress, well at least what felt like no progress. So I took everything upstairs and I have this, I have settings, I have the 60 amp setting that for some reason it would do the same thing but like a lot quicker, like it would have no power after 10 seconds, but then I would turn the bike off, turn it back on, and then it wouldn't have the issue. It would go, I could drive off somewhere, it'll be fine. So like, I'm like, you know what, let me take this 60 amp setting and let me just slowly try to turn it up into my 200 amp setting. So pretty much what I was doing as an example, so this had it at 60 amps, I would turn this up to 200 amps, go on the display page, throttle the motor or make the motor spin, for up to 50 seconds since it will cut off at 30 seconds i'll count to 50 it doesn't cut off then i lifted up the phase current because the 60 amp settings only had uh, i only had it at 5000 so i turned it up to 9960 tested the motor didn't cut off then i went here to lift it up tested the motor didn't cut off changed these settings tested the motor didn't cut off and then at least it seemed like it wasn't cutting off until i put the bike back together i went to drive off and it was doing the same thing except this time the motor would at least spin, but with like apps, like barely any power. I, I can't remember if it was enough power to move me or not, but if it was enough, I probably wasn't going no faster than five miles per hour. No, that's right, I think it wasn't moving me. It, it, it will spin the wheel this time if I lift the rear wheel up, but I can literally grab the tire and stop it from spinning. That's how much torque it didn't have. So it almost felt like, I don't know, it almost felt like sport mode is activated when you don't have a switch, but it's only activated for like 30 seconds and it'll use whatever current you put it to. Once it goes out, it seems like it glitches out and has a problem with going back to your regular current, and instead it just uses a very doo-doo amount of power. Either it's that, because that's an assumption, I don't know if that's actually true, but that's almost what it feels like. So either it's that or it's something else. So after it was doing that, I'm like, okay, what else it could be? The 60 amp setting is still working. The 200 amp setting is not. All right, so to bring it back real quick, one thing I forgot to mention when I was messing around and testing, um, putting this to 60 amps all the way to 200 and then spinning the motor, turning the phase amps from 5,000 to 9960 and then spinning the motor all the way from this stuff all the way up to here. Now on the broken setting, I can't remember what this was at. The broken setting was at 100, but on the 60 amp setting, the setting that was working that I was converting to 200 amps was at 14. After changing this to 9000 and then keeping this at 14, spinning the motor, testing it, I was going to change this, but I'm like, you know what, I don't want to because the motor was still working. And that's when I find out it actually wasn't, it was doing the same thing, just with a little more power. So what I did was, I still kept this at 14, because like I could say last time at 100, this was acting broken. So I kept this at 14, but then I took this and put it to zero. And that's when it started working again. So after that, I haven't touched the settings. These are my settings right now. I got flux field weakening. I got this stuff here. 
low at, at 25 or gear one at 25, gear two at 50, and then gear three at 100 with this for some reason needing to be at 14. Uh, this wasn't working so I set that down to zero and now you know I got a pretty good amount of power and all that. Um, I just don't really always speed off or use gear three because if I hit it, it'll go and it won't cut off. But the voltage sag is like 11, maybe 12 volt sag. It's pretty ridiculous and I don't know if that's very good on these cells. So with that being said, that's the problems I'm having with controlling this goddamn program. I still don't understand why the phase current has to be at 9960 instead of 770 what the controller is actually supposed to push at a max of but for some reason you have to put it at 9960 I still don't know why they do that so if I wanted to lower it and put it at 5000 I really don't know how much phase current I'm actually running so besides all that um, that's really the main issues I'm having I'm still I'm slightly learning to control like I just found out that this section up here is your speed ratio and I think this section right here is your current ratio and um, yeah there's still a lot of stuff I'm learning about this uh, program now if there's some stuff you would know about that they can teach me about would be nice because see there's certain things I still don't quite fully understand some of it a lot of it's still in your face but I'm kind of curious does sport mode if you don't have a switch does sport mode act as a boost current and when you set these automatic logout enablers like if I set this to 10 and that does that mean it'll push 290 amps for 10 seconds so I'm kind of curious to that or like will it do recover like it'll push the 290 for 10 seconds and the recover time is like I can't do that for another 30 seconds or if I put it down at 10 seconds I can't do that for another 10 seconds if I let off the throttle and hit it again I have to wait 10 seconds for it to really hit that boost current you know it's, it's simple stuff like that but the main thing that confuses me is the phase amps and that's the good and bad with the controller the bad being that I was having this problem uh, I don't know if it'll do it again if I decide to change something in my settings, which is going to be annoying if that's the case. And um, it's glitchy, it's finicky, but everybody knew that about the photo controllers. Shit, I seen people talking about that when I bought it. Uh, I just couldn't find a better better option within my price range. Where the two, the good thing is it's fixable. It has been fixed slightly because, like I said, if I change the settings, I don't know if it'll uh, mess up again. And at first, I thought I was doing this because I'm like, if it's not the battery that's for some reason having a problem with giving out current, and that's why it's doing this. Um, I thought my controller was damaged, I thought something in the controller was damaged, and it turns out it's not. So that's the good, the controller's not damaged, it is fixable, I just need to work my way around it, and probably need to figure out how to use this controller better. So now that we got the good and the bad out the way for the controller, let's start talking about this battery. So of course, we're going to talk about the bad first, but the bad isn't as bad as I thought it was. So let me go ahead and explain. I thought the seller lied twice about how much amps this battery can handle. First, when I bought it, he proclaimed 300 amps continuous 500 peak. Then when it arrived to my house and I asked what the BMS was, he accidentally told me 200 amps continuous and 300 amps peak. And then I'm thinking when I'm testing it, he lied again because I had a bus bar current set to 100 amps, phase amps 9960, and I had flux field weakening at 105%. The bike cut off on me at 6.98 miles while I was throttling and I saw the voltmeter say 73 volts. But the blue voltmeter that I use is a bit off. So to compare it to the voltmeter that they sent me and the program, it's about two, one to two volts off. So it's probably cut off about 71, 72 volts again. Mind you, the battery wasn't fully charged. It had a bit of a charge in it, but I thought, okay, it's charged high enough. It should last long because it's a 50 amp hour battery. But it cut off and I'm thinking, okay, let me turn all my settings down. I turned it down to like 30 amps, no flux field weakening. After six miles, it didn't cut off. Then I turned it up to 200 amps no flux field weakening i'm just hitting it hitting it hitting it throttling the crap out of it i'm getting like eight volt sags but it never cut off after another six to seven miles so i turned the settings down to 180 on the bus bar current also sport mode current and i put the phase current to like uh 9000 or 8500 if i'm correct and that's when i did the video that you guys saw but still, after 18 points, after a full charge and 18.75 miles, it cut off. And that's when I realized, okay, it might not be the current. Maybe it's something else because why is it starting to, why is it consistently cut off around this 70 volt range? And I was able to get 18 miles. So the next thing was, did they, is the amp hours of this battery actually shorter than what they were claimed? Is this not a 50 amp hour battery? Is this like a 17 amp hour battery? That didn't make much sense because I'm like, mm, I, I'm not really seeing signs of this being a short amp hour battery because why is it not cutting off at 60 volts like they said it was supposed to 
And that's what I'm thinking, you know what? They probably gave me a battery with a damaged cell. So that was the next thing I was thinking. And that's when I started to realize, nah, I can't be damaged cells because by Project Flash, I damaged those cells. As an example, the Project Flash has a 60 amp continuous battery, yet I was pushing 100 amps continuous in it. Somehow I didn't realize that my dumbass was doing that, but I was doing that. And that battery at the time, before it was damaged, I could do like 15 miles and then it might cut off. I could do 20 miles and then it might cut off. I might do 14 miles and it might cut off. It will cut off at any random moment where something in the battery might be getting too hot or I might be pushing that current for too long. Where after a while, it came around like January 2022, the bike wouldn't last past like two miles. And I used to think that the bike was cutting off because my motor was getting too hot. If you look at old videos I did on the Project Flash, I have videos of me doing like 80, setting the controller to 80% because I thought I was pushing 100% of the battery, like 100% at 60 amps. I didn't realize that, no, it's not DC current 100%, it's DC current 100 amps. I'm pushing 100 amps. So by January, when I thought the motors were heating, it was dead in the middle of the winter, freezing cold. I'm out there riding the Project Flash and it cuts off after a mile. Maybe not even a mile, maybe a few blocks. I'm like, okay, there's absolutely no way my motor got hot that fast. Motor was cold. And then I started to realize, oh man, it's, the motor was never overheating. I was damaging the battery. That's when I finally realized that I'm not pushing 100% of the battery. I'm pushing 100 amps into the battery. And so far to the point that I can't even do a mile anymore on the Project Flash. And it's 12.26 it's p.m. right now. If I charge the Project Flash's battery right now, it'll be dead by tomorrow. So that is signs of a dead battery or damaged cells. It'll charge, the battery will work, but I can't go past 38 miles per hour. I can't do more than a mile and the battery will not hold that charge. It will not hold it at all. Where this, it's holding the charge, it's consistently cutting off after 18 miles and it's consistently cutting off at 71 volts. And um, I'm still able to get a lot of power, out, I'm still able to get a lot of power out of this battery. So if it was damaged already, then I shouldn't have to do 10 months of doing this to this battery for it to start showing those signs. It should be doing that already, and it's not. So then I came to the last conclusion, and then the last conclusion that became obvious once I thought of this last conclusion. And that is, the cells, or one cell, two cell, however many cells, are unbalanced. So like I said, if I'm correct, and I, I kind of think I am, I'm not an expert at this stuff, but from the information i've been reading searching up and now getting from uh somebody in my comments i gotta shout him out uh mr gardner i think that's his channel name been giving me a lot of information on these past recent videos that i've been doing on this bobber uh, a lot of stuff i didn't know so i really gotta shout him out for the information and helping me out on certain things i'm um, coming to the conclusion that i think these the cells are just unbalanced and that's it they probably put together a battery pack it didn't make sure all the cells were charged or balanced or whatever. So that's the bad news, but this is where I want to come in with the good news. The damage is not as bad as I thought it was. If anything, it's not even damaged. It's just, once again, it's unbalanced. A pack of cells or a cell or whatever just needs to be charged up. And it's as simple as that. So I have two decisions. And I can either be scary, be like, nah, I don't want to open up the battery. I don't want to damage nothing. I mean, 18 miles, that's, that's pretty good, almost 19 miles. And I can still get some good power out of it, some good speed. Or I can stop being scary, open up the battery, and figure out which ones are unbalanced. I already got me a clamp or voltmeter, yeah, clamp meter, so I can already check that way. And um, I was already told by Mr. Gardner, and from the little bit of research I did, that I can charge it up with the balancer. I thought the balancer only worked with the Lipo battery packs. I don't know if those are really any different when it comes to the sales, but if I can use the balancer, that'd probably be even better than using a DC power supplier or voltage supplier, whatever it's called. Um, forgot the name, but those are two options and I'm probably gonna go towards opening the battery up and fixing it up because if I'm able to get almost 19 miles out of an unbalanced battery pack, I should be able to get some good ass mileage if I balance it. I mean, it is a 50 amp hour battery. That's why I went with the 50 amp hour battery so I can get more miles. But that's not the only thing I'm gonna talk about. It's the last thing I wanna talk about and that is AliExpress and another scam tactic. So before I even did my dispute, I was trying to ask the seller what was going on. I told him the charge it charges up to 87, but it keeps dying at 71 volts. It's not even cutting off at 60. Why is it cutting off so early? Is something wrong? Is this fixable? The first thing the seller wanted me to do right away was open up the battery and check the BMS. 
I'm thinking that doesn't sound like a good idea because I'm more asking this if see if uh, hey, I'm having problems. Can I get like a replacement? I'll send you this battery back and you send me another one. Now you want me to open it up. It already it literally says on the sticker of the battery, do not open it up. It'll void warranty. So I'm like, is this another tactic? So I'm thinking, um, I said, I don't know how to do all that. And then the seller says open blue pack or open blue something, you know, the kind of broken English. It's so I'm like, um, is there a possibility I can just do like a replacement or a return or return refund? Seller straight up ignored me. It said he read the message, never replied. I'm like, okay, dispute, made the dispute. Wasn't really expecting anything from it. I've already did research a long time ago, which is why I'm just kind of stupid for making the mistake of even buying this battery. But did my research a long time ago that uh, the, con the 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 customer just never wins the the the, the dispute. So. I'll do it anyways just in case, you know, never hurts to try, but I'm not expecting much from it. Pretty much, uh, seller just kept saying the same thing over and over again. He wasn't even making up a new, any new um, sentences. He just kept saying over and over again, told him, leave it on charger, uh, it'll fix issue, blah, 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 blah. It, it works, it's not as good because it's winter, it's cold outside, batteries don't work good and cold. I'm like, that's not how it works. It will knock it off on 71 volt, 71 volt just because it's cold. But of course, he's not going to make a new proposal. He's not going to say anything different. He's going to repeat the same thing over and over again because he knows he's going to win. He knows he's going to get his money. Yada, yada, yada. AliExpress steps in. Absolutely zero help. I'm trying to say that my reasons that were clearly showing pictures and typing uh, or what I was saying, visual proof, my, apparently my joints weren't valid. And then all of a sudden, this and this has been going on for like two weeks. I have been to this dispute like two weeks ago. Then all of a sudden, the day I wake up and now they're actually giving me an offer of return and refund for the full $1,048.51 or just a refund for $104. And I kind of, I'm like, wow, now they're, now they're trying to offer me my money? What the frick is about time? So I got a little excited. And I saw this on my phone. So I got up, opened up my laptop, opened everything up, uh, re-read the options and all that. And it's, I looked at it, I'm like, what, what made them want to do this? The option that was valid was the allegations of pretty much the uh, amps wasn't what it was. But I'm like, wait a minute, y'all was acting like it wasn't valid before, and now all of a sudden it's valid. So I find it a little odd. So something told me, do some research. I already, once again, researched that the customer never wins the dispute. So I'm thinking, is there, is there has a thing that exists where, or has anybody had the issue of they return a product and they don't get their money? Like does AliExpress make you return it first, it has to arrive to the seller and then they'll send you their money? Because if that's the case, I don't like that at all. That sounds like bullshit. That sounds like I just got your battery. Now I'm not gonna send you your money back. You ain't gonna hear nothing from me. So now you're, uh, you don't have the item you bought and you ain't got your money. So I did some research, found what I was looking for and yeah, I was right. Somebody said they bought a keyboard off AliExpress. It arrived broken or damaged or something wasn't working properly. So it's like, hey man, can I do a, um, a refund or something? The seller told him. The seller told him to do a dispute. Did the dispute? Try to get the refund. He returned the item. He never got his money. AliExpress was talking about some. You didn't send the keyboard. You sent another product. Pretty much, I act like instead of him sending his keyboard, he sent an old flip phone or something. Trying to act like he was the one lying. He's like, I sent my keyboard. So now I don't have a keyboard and I don't have any money. And people that were replying to him in the comments is pretty much saying, don't ever do returns on AliExpress, just do refunds, which tells me, okay, so you went through the same thing, and you went through the same thing, and you went through the same thing. So I'm like, okay, it's another scam tactic. So I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. So first of all, and this is where the decision comes in. I already made an idiotic move in buying this battery. I could take a risky and probably dumb move of sending it back in hopes to get my money back. Because yeah, I could use the money to build another battery. Um, it'll help me build the battery better. I already know where to buy sales. I already know what sales I want. Um, I already know that this time, if I buy something from AliExpress, make sure that it actually has reviews. And I'm talking about plenty of reviews, like at least 20, 30, 40, 100 reviews, good ones. So I know where to, and I don't even have to risk that. I'm, I can just pay an extra $40 by getting a BMS off of electric, Electro and Company. So I know where to get a BMS. I know where to buy sales. Uh, I know where to buy some parts now, and I know what stuff I want to use. But, once again, I could take that risky move of thinking I'm going to get my money back, or just be like, I'm keeping this battery because it's not even damaged. It's just unbalanced. All I got to do is balance it. It's that easy. It's that simple. 
and just get $104, which they probably won't even give me the 104 I think the seller proposes these options. The AliExpress and the seller, they be talking, because obviously AliExpress gets a portion of this money. I mean, the seller has to sell on AliExpress, so AliExpress is getting some money from this. So they probably be making some solutions, either that's sending it back, be like, no, we ain't returning this, or scamming the buyer. And then they'll act like, okay, this is the new proposal. Let's see how you feel, and then we'll see how the seller feels. Because they always try to put it like the seller has the last, you know, they, they choose last. Doubt it. I highly doubt it. Because AliExpress would say no re refund. I would deny the no refund, and then the seller would accept the refund. So I know y'all talking behind the scene. AliExpress is just the biggest thug scamming company on the internet right now <laughs> so like i said it's the decision making which i mean i already know what decision i'm making i'm not about to waste my time sitting this back so i'm gonna choose the 104 dollar option and i'm gonna see if they give me 104 dollars if they do that'll help me uh get a balancer i might have the money to get a balancer i might not it depends right now um because i'm stacking up my money for something i'm not gonna say it right now i'm gonna I'm gonna discuss something in the next video. The next video, I want to do a big channel update, but that's not that's not skip too far in the future. That money, if I do actually get the $104, it'll help me get a balancer to balance the battery. It'll help me get some certain things. Uh, maybe not because I might not even get the money that quickly. But I bet you, if I do the $104 option, <laughs> the seller's gonna deny and actually no, I don't get $104. So, but I bet you, if I do that $1,000 option, the seller will accept and I'll pop up with no battery and no money. Mind you too, when I told the seller what was going on, he automatically knew what was wrong with the battery. Now he wanted me to check the BMS, he knew it was unbalanced. So the next scam is, he returns the battery, I get my battery back, and I keep his money. I balance the battery, sell it again, make another thousand dollars, and then bam, we just doubled it and made more money off of this idiot. That's what the seller's trying to do. So like I said, that's not happening. I'm gonna choose the $104 option, see if I get my $104. Uh, if I do, nice. And then I still have a battery that I can just easily balance. Uh, I already thinking about getting a DC uh, power supplier or something like that. I think that's what it's called. And uh, I can try to get a balancer since once again, shout out to Mr. Gardner. Uh, he said I can get a balancer to balance it out. I thought the balancers only worked on Lippo, but if they work on other cells too, great. Because that'll help me balance it out better instead of using something else that might be a little more dangerous. Who knows? But I've already also made a dispute with my bank. So hopefully that helps out and that'll be even better i got a battery i got a hundred dollars and i got a thousand so i got eleven hundred dollars in a battery and i can help me build a new battery for this project which i might do depending on how much power i can actually push with this half balanced battery uh if i want more then i'll gladly build a battery for this bike and then take this one out this half balanced battery out and use it for a different project it's a little bigger than the project flash battery so i don't think i'll be able to slap it in the project flash that'd be lovely if i could but i don't think i can so yeah i already made a dispute with my bank i'm not falling for another scam tactic it's not happening but with that being said that's it for this video man hope y'all like this one i hope y'all enjoyed the long talk hope it wasn't boring or nothing but I just once again want to update y'all as much as possible on this bike, especially while I am still trying to use it. And that's what's going on. The damage is not as bad as I thought. If anything, it's not damaged. It just needs a little bit of an extra charge on a specific pack, whatever pack that is. That'll also allow me, when I do open it up, to see which cells these are specifically, whether they be round ones like the cans or the big blocky ones. I'm expecting them to be the round ones. And then I can read what's on them and see what the current act can actually push out of these cells. Uh, I want to do at least like three more videos on this bike before I shortly retire it might be more than three i'll have to see because like i said in the next couple of videos i want to talk about something i want to talk about something really important pretty much has something to do with this channel but i'm not going to get into it too much i'm not going to skip into the future because i want that to be a dedicated video on its own this video is already longer than i kind of expected it to be i'm not gonna lie but uh i got a lot of stuff planned which is why i quite haven't even opened the battery up yet uh, that's why I haven't bought anything to really really check the battery the only thing I bought was the clamp meter because uh, I'm whole I got some money right now, but I'm holding on to it. I'm holding on to it to make sure um, I Stay within budget. Let me just say that much. So let me stop there. <laughs> I want to give out too much hints I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna be too worried about doing more miles on this battery. If it's not damaging it It's just cutting off a little early, but if nothing's getting damaged, which I don't think anything is I'm going to do a couple more videos. 18 miles is good. Shit, 10, min 10 miles will give me a nice, good, long video for y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. It's been... Oh, if you did, make sure to hit like, comment, subscribe.
and stay tuned for more. And I'm out. Peace.